Oh, there it is. Right in front of my face. Boom. Boom. I am so excited. I have Sean Clark here from High Level. And we actually met, man, it must have been three or four years ago at a conference when you spoke uh, with the guys over at, I can't even remember their names, um, but it was a huge event. And I was one of the uh, sponsorships for the program. And now it's been so long and now I get to catch up with you. I know you've been super busy. So previously you guys had this software that was for made for agencies. You guys didn't have the white label. You didn't have uh, a lot of the, th you didn't have like text integrations. You didn't have the workflows. A lot of the tools kind of felt like spliced together, but now it's like all in one encompassing. It's amazing to see where you guys have started and now where you guys are going, adding AI, your own assistance, like all the different things that go involved with high level. And it is really an all-in-one platform from memberships to sales funnels to websites, WordPress, your own answering service, like <laughs> everything in, in, in between. So it's so amazing. <clears throat> Sean, take it away. What have you guys been working on recently? Where have you guys like going? And tell us everything that you want to want. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think we're honestly doing the same thing as we always have, which is, you know, we... Uh, always had a vision of serving a certain customer. And the way we thought about that was how do we ask that customer and solicit that feedback and then just build what that customer wants in the order they want it and the, with the features they want and kind of the way they want. And, you know, we've really stuck true to that. And I think that's kind of why we're here. So everything that we've been working on recently, things like custom objects or uh, ad buying through the platform, things like that, those are all really representative of uh, things that our customers have asked us to do. And so that's pretty exciting from from my perspective because, you know, we don't really consider ourselves, you know, like uh, some omnipotent uh, software company that knows all things. We sort of think the opposite way, which is we know nothing, but we just know how to build stuff and our customers will kind of lead the way. So we use our ideas, yeah. our public ideas board and the votes on that to really figure out kind of where we're going. Now, you know, we're, uh, it, these days we push out in a lot of different places all simultaneously because we have a 1200 person team now. Um, you wow, know, we have congratulations. almost 400 engineers. Um, so it's a very big team. So basically every single day, um, whether it's social media posting or to, you know, to CRM or, or, you know, customer communications, text messaging, you know, in call outbound call in websites, funnels, you know, chat widgets, AI, you name it, we're putting out new stuff all the time. Um, I'm super excited. Um, one of the big new initiatives, uh, that you'll see this quarter is going to be on the inbound voice AI side. And then very shortly, the outbound voice AI side. Now the outbound voice AI side is always exciting because people think, I know magic sales genie calls out to thousands of people and makes sales for me without me doing anything, which is sort of nonsense. But um, the inbound is actually more exciting to me because we work with a lot of small businesses. They all get calls every single day. They miss them like crazy. And I have personally had a background experience in, in helping businesses take these inbound calls that they miss. And I've seen how magical it can be. And normally it used to be done with humans, but now we're going to be able to do it very successfully with AI. And I think that is going to light some stuff on fire. And the cool thing about so inbound is inbound is something where a business can't choose when that inbound call happens versus an outbound thing. It's like, a, oh yeah, I can start it. I can stop it. Um, versus inbound, you know, customers call and customers call. And if you don't pick up the phone, you lose business. It's just that simple. Right. So I'm pretty excited to be able to, to bring voice AI to that because I think that will have the most impact on the actual customers that our customers serve, which are a lot of uh, small businesses. Well, I think that's amazing that you have that feature because just like you were saying, the inbound, if you miss out on that call, you're not gonna have the ability to follow, I mean, you'll follow up with them, but they're gonna be on the next person going down yeah, the list gone. of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna find this next plumber or I'm gonna find this next roofer because totally. they didn't answer their phone. And that's so right. if you have that, it makes it, and if there's statistics that if you're able to answer the first call within like, three seconds or something, yep. you have a much higher chance of making sales. So that much, just having much, much that higher. allows you to like scale your business really, really easily. Yeah, totally. And most people aren't calling to ask super sophisticated in-depth questions. Most people are calling to, to, to book a book a time for you to either come to them or for you to go to them or, you know, or et cetera. And so it's really just about making that initial connection. And, and I think most people, what they're trying to do is check a box, right? Like I know for me, like my wife will say, Hey, did you, um, did you get, you know, is, you know, did you talk, call a, a person to replace our fence? And do you have that scheduled? 
And I'm not like, I mean, as I'm sure you can get really in-depth and fence stuff, but I don't care. I just need the fence, you know, like replaced or whatever. It's like right. super old. So I'm just like, hey, are you a fence person? Cool. I can see you've got good reviews. So I called you, uh, you know, can you do the job? How much is it? Okay, that sounds reasonable. But when can you do it? Okay, you're on my calendar. Check, moving on, right? Right. And, and, and even before that, it's, hey, can you come out and give me a price? And that's all you're really looking for. So our inbound voice AI will rock that use case. Um, and I think it'll be incredibly powerful for people. And because it's AI, it, you know, it's a lot more affordable than having to hire people. So um, right. I think that's going to be something that will at least uh, help people, you know, put a foot in the door. And then the great thing is, if it gets complex or sophisticated, it can it can it can bomb out to a person. And so I think it'll be a, a really cool cool offering. I think that doesn't mean like like you were saying. I just called my vet today because our dog's having a little bit of issues. And they were able to answer the phone right away. And it was just like, hey, could you, do you have Wednesday open? Because I can't do it today. I got a call with Sean. <laughs> and uh, let me, you know, schedule. And so they were able to do it. But I mean, how much is that per hour that they're paying that person when they could easily do it through, you know, an AI rep? Or yeah. if, say you're someone who hires someone from the Philippines to do something, how much are you paying them or versus the cost of a scalability with, so you're getting two or three calls I mean, how yep. many people do you need versus yep. AI just is kind of the leveling field. Not only that, I love that, but you can actually feed this AI with uh, info about your business, your pricing, totally. all the calendars. It can look at that and it's all linked up. Can you go yep. a little bit more in detail on how that works and how you, a company can not just give general answers, but actually know about the business? Oh yeah, absolutely. So the way we set it up initially was trying to make it super easy so you can feed in Google Docs, websites, all of that stuff. And the, it'll automatically spider all that information and it'll it'll put it into the bot. And then as you update that information, you can re-spider it. So as you update your website and, and then and then that kind of forms your base. And then from there, what we notice is, of course, there's the there's the sort of the answer on the website or in the FAQ or whatever, but then there's the answer that you might give if you're you know in real life. And so the way you can do it is you can literally, if you see a response you don't like, you kind of hit this like down arrow or down thumb rather, and you can say, no, no, I want you to answer like this. And then the next time that you'll sort of retrain the bot on those those instances. And then what you're doing really is just rounding out the bot. Um, and it really makes it super simple to train it, to get it to give those right answers. And again, as things change in your business, you can just retrain the bot automatically um, and it'll just get better and better and better. And then, you know, we've got into the point, like we use it, <clears throat> excuse me, on our website for all of our chats. Um, we're using it now and it's great. It's amazing. It, it does 99% of the job. So we, we literally used to have a whole team that would sort of be staffed 24 seven to answer incoming web chats. Mm -hmm. We've been able to basically move all those people into live phone support where we, we don't yet have inbound voice AI activated, but we will soon. Um, and then, uh, and then there, and then we kept really only keeping like one or two people. And all they really do is look at any of the chats that people don't like. Uh, and then they're sitting there training the bot, making it better. So wow. it's really, really, really simple. And uh, it's very powerful. Well, think about that for a second. And, and that's just a, to my audience, but think about that, like you, instead of hiring people to answer the phones all day, you're hiring people to give better responses that are yep. more human-like, more tailored to your business, and you're honing in on what works and what doesn't. And so right. that allows for so much, I guess, consistency within your business. And you yep. don't have, you're not retraining people because all the stuff's already trained. And if someone decides to leave the company, you're not without that great person because you have an AI tool that's doing it for you. And so yeah. when, do you see that, that AI is going to be, obviously it's a big part in the future, but how do you feel that AI is doing with uh, terms of acting real, being able to close deals, being able to you know, do all these things that we thought last year wasn't even like, wasn't even on a, the blip on the radar. Yeah, so I think the state of AI today is if you try, if you don't try to pretend you're human, you'll do really well. So I think of it almost like IVR used when IVR first came out, it was sort of pitched as this uh, technology where people were going to be able to sort of self find answers. And given that IV, IVR is that thing where it's press one for sales, press two for support. Now, in that instance, it didn't work out the way it was pitched. But it was never pitched as a replacement, like it wasn't going to pretend to be human. And I think this is the idea. If you come out and say, hey, like I'm an AI robot, I'm here to help you kind of do your thing. Most of the time people, as long as it solves for that issue, I think people will be fine with it. I think, And I think it's because there are going to be limitations in that technology. 
Um, and again, it's kind of like everything. It, 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 the goal isn't to 100% replace the, the human. The, the goal here is to take all of the repetitive, you know, as the business, you know, this is the same question that gets answered a thousand billion zillion right. times. Yes, it's in the FAQ on the website that nobody reads, but um, that's the whole point. People are going to call in, they're going to chat in, they're going to connect with your business in different ways. And they're going to ask the same silly question. What are your hours? How much for this? Can you, can I schedule that? Right? Like all the things that normally come up and are, and you just don't want to have, have a person sit there and say, we open at seven, we close at five, we open at seven, we close at five. Like you don't want them to have, you don't want to pay someone basically to waste their brain space. And so right. really, if you think of AI as that, as solving for that, it crushes that. Where I think people get it wrong is they think of it as like this sort of like end all be all solution where you, know, you don't have to do the work anymore. And it, you know, it's like a money tree or something. That's right. where people I think kind of get it wrong. I think it's a it's about opening the door to a conversation, creating that first connection and trying to solve for the simplest of cases. And then using the human as the backstop for, hey, all right, we've moved beyond the simple to the complex. We need to like really fill this in. This person has a lot of information, you know, questions. We we know a lot more. Now let's connect with them because they're kind of ready for that level versus before you were just sitting there sort of answering the same questions right. over and over and over again. AI can really do a great job supplanting that use case. Well, and I've also heard some studies recently that the AIs that have been properly trained, especially the newer AIs and not the kind of older AIs that were kind of robotic, uh, have actually given people for customer support questions faster answers and more Much precise than, uh, than a regular human and 100%, solving customer support. So humans to answer those fallible, questions. That's for sure. And ultimately, as a result, because they're fallible, that they can make mistakes. And like you said, right. let's say I'm new because I'm just starting today, you know, or I've been here for a week or a month. Who knows? It depends on the sophistication. You're going to get things wrong. And that's just how it is. Um, the AI will for sure be more consistent. And all you have to do is correct the wrong answer one time. Whereas with a human being, you're going to have to correct that human being. Let's say that human being is perfect, which they're not. You still have to multiply that out. The bigger you get, the more you have to. And then you have these big training programs and on and on and on and on, right? Versus AI, you're really just training one thing and it's one to many. And that's awesome. And again, to your point, you know, what people want is in most of these situations, they're not look, they're not trying to make a friend. They're not, you know, here to hang out. They're trying to get business done. They're trying to get an answer to a question. And it is much faster um, and it is more consistent and it is more available. It's all the things that as consumers of a service or a product we want. Um, and I, again, I think if that, if that sort of, it, it, it's sort of like, if you thought about this in real life, if, if, if you walked into a store and there was a robot and it was obviously a robot, it looked like a robot and it could do the thing you wanted it to do, of course you would be fine with that, right? It's where right. it sort of does not compute and breaks down that things go wrong. But AI, um, I think on the chat side and on the voice AI side for those use cases is really good now. And they're getting even better because some of these voice AIs, like you look at Eleven Labs or some of the other ones out there that mimic human voice. They <clears throat> do the inflections, they do all the things. So, I mean, I, I had a uh, AI bot recently and I was like, man, this sounds like a bot, but it's pretty close. Like where I'd be like, they just give it a few uh, adjustments and it's solid. And if they were doing outbound yeah, it, will get, it gets better every day. And I think that's the important part about it is the way we look at it is, you just kind of keep like you want you sort of stay one little step behind the the cutting edge because the cutting edge has that has a little bit of a rough edge to it. Right. But you just keep kind of jumping ahead and it just gets better and better and better. And I think ultimately, you know, you will get to the place where, you know, you won't be able to fundamentally tell the difference, um, you know, except in select cases. But that's the whole point. The whole point is right. for it to just sort of flow naturally, allow you to do, you know, talk to it the way you would talk to a person and have them kind of respond the way that a person would. And I think you're, you're absolutely right. We'll just get better and better and better here um, until honestly, it, it really takes care of almost, you know, 99% of use cases kind of thing. Well, and it's going to be so good that it does allow people like you, uh, people that are doing things that are, are repetitive, they can take that away from them. And so they can work on higher level stuff. They can give exactly. more support to their, to their loyal customer base. They can do interviews like this and talk to people and, and actually have conversations versus having to pick up a phone. Oh yeah, we're, we're still open. Thanks. Oh yep. yeah, we're still open. So it does allow, it frees up so that people can give more value into the space. And that's what I, it's I totally agree important. with that. hundred percent. So AI aside, 
what else is going on? I know you guys have memberships. I know you were just talking memberships, about memberships, communities, ad certifications. Buying, ad buying is on the platform. What's that? Uh, you guys have, uh, I know that the membership side has a certification that you can give to your yep. customers and if they also, went through the uh, training. white label community app now or, or yep. customer sorry, it's communities. It also, but it's actually more than that. It's actually really the white label app for uh, the, our customers, customers, which right. is um, for their people to come in and it'll start, it starts with the community and courses, but it's also going to expand out into all the things. So invoicing documents, like really it's an app for a small business to use with their customers, regardless of whether they're a roofer or they're a course creator or everything in between. So that, that that's evolving. It's really going to be like a customer portal app is the best way to think about I that. Love that. Um, and it'll flex and bend based on kind of the, um, the features you have enabled. So that's very cool. I've um, actually, the community one is similar to another uh, platform that I used and yeah. I didn't want to spend $200 for two different groups. I was yeah. like, why am I spending all this money when I could use high level who, who has everything and it's yeah. just the same, but better, but I can create a free group. I can create a paid group. And what I love about it is, and this is a little tip for anyone who doesn't know this, but in my free group, I have a module in there that says upgrade. And in there, if they buy the course that is in the free, it automatically gives them access to the, the paid group. And that's all built in. And it makes it yeah. seamless because I can send them an email. I can do that. And those other platforms, you can't do that because you don't control the email marketing. You don't control. I mean, you can add APIs and, and, that, and all that other stuff. But that's just confusing versus having it built in with it's high also level. your group, right? It's, it's white labeled. And yeah. so I think that... What I've noticed, and this will be interesting. I think the my long-term bet on community is there's going to be two types of communities. There's going to be the people that like, I mean, community is hard in my opinion. You have to create your own space. You have to get people to come to it. Um, so you have to, A, you have to advertise and market it. That's great. But you also have to stuff it with enough content for me to bother to come there to see stuff, right? And so I think there are going to be two types of communities. There are going to be people who have that going on for them. And then the vast majority of people, it's going to be basically like, you know, like nothing's there because it's just too hard for them to sustain it. And so I think that when you have nothing, you love this idea that like, oh, I can, I can suck people over from other people's communities. But if, but the people you're going to be sucking over from are going to be the people that actually have thriving communities. And if you're a person with thriving communities, I don't think you really want to share your members with other people. That's in fact, I right. think the whole point, because otherwise you'd be in a Facebook, right? Because isn't that right. Facebook is this, is that idea. So if you have this really strong community, I think you're going to want to wall it off from other people. So I exactly. think you're going to want a white label community because you're putting in all this work. Why yeah. would you give that work away to somebody else? And why would you let them ride on your brand um, to promote themselves or right. worse to take your community members and promote other communities to those people, right? It's, it's right. silly. Well, and they, they <clears throat> will feed them with other marketing, like you were saying, other marketing stuff, other emails. They'll use uh, your ad, their, their emails to run ads, to totally. target those similar people, all the things that you, they could essentially use versus having that walled off uh, community of your own that has your own branding on it, has your own name on it, has multiple communities that you built, a free community versus a paid community. You get both of those are unlimited. You could, you could literally sell another community as like your own, like you can be a agency for communities yeah, and manage 100%. other people's communities. Yeah. So you there's help, so yeah, many so different So if you're ways. really good at it, that's the other thing. You're right. There'll be people who are really good at building communities for other people and they're going to want to charge for that, but they right. don't want to have to put, again, they don't want to have to take all of their work and give it away for free to somebody else, right? That's the old model. The old model is, right. oh shoot, you know what? I got to go buy somebody else's product, put their hood, you know, put their logo out there, promote them, put a lot, you know, all my energy and time and effort go into that. I mean, this is why we've been white labeled since the beginning, because right. we originally saw a lot of agencies do that. They would buy these other CRMs and marketing automation products, and they would literally give away all of their brand equity to those, uh, to those products. And now we're sort of seeing this in the moment for communities, but I think what will happen very quickly is the larger community owners will start to say, wait a second, how do I take this logo off? Hey, wait a second, how do I take these, join these other groups um, thing off? I'm putting all this work and time and effort and spending money on ads and running and creating courses and content constantly. Why would I want to put any of that to somebody else's brand when right. I can keep all of it for myself? Well, and it also reinforces that brand recognition of having them their own logos there versus yeah. them logging in and then maybe they're like oh i see this other uh, this other community 
be a Facebook group or whatever, uh, or that other company. And you're like, oh, maybe I'll join them and I don't need this anymore. So maybe it's a little bit more, it has more content or it has more people talking or whatever. It doesn't, it allows them to wall off essentially. And I, and I love that. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be I think that's going to be great for people. So as people get into communities, I think that's the number one thing I would I would tell them to think about is how are you protecting your brand equity? That's great. And so if we kind of look at this, you have your your white label product that is your own brand. You have an AI to help you do a lot of the heavy lifting. You have a community that is walled off that you can build around and really have your perfect audience all in one. And now you have all that information, you can actually run ads within uh, on the platform to scale that. So how, walk yep. me through that and how does that work? Well, and, and then everything in between. So you've got the right, right, right. You have social posting, the, a post as, as you're posting in community and you want to share out, you can also automatically post all of that stuff to Facebook and to Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and all that crazy stuff, right? So, um, so that you, you sort of have this, and this is the idea, this has been the platform since the beginning, all of the things that you need to manage and run a business, regardless of how you enter it. I don't, you know, it could be a roofer, you could be a course creator, a community person, but the idea is you're going to need all these same tools in one spot. Right. And that's exactly what we provide. And then if you're somebody who, who knows how to use those tools in service of others, you can white label it and resell it and create a whole business around it and create profit yep. for yourself. And again, right. the idea here was very simple. It, it's We understand that there are going to be all kinds of people who are really good experts at certain industries or certain techniques or certain kinds of modalities. And we wanted to just be the platform to support those things. And that's exactly what we built. So you name a, you know, a, a CRM marketing feature, um, you're good to go. But like you said, you know, you can, you can spin up an ad on Facebook that drives to a funnel that's built in the system that adds it to a community, the free community that they want to join and then adds them to a free course and then gets them to upgrade to the paid community and buy the paid course, right? Um, and then sends them emails about the new events that you're running and you can run the event there and on and on and on and on. And then you can, you know, you can post all your stuff to social media that you need to post. Um, you can have the chat bots on the website. You can have the inbound voice AI answering your inbound calls. Like really the goal here is to help you. And then you can invoice out of it. You can create, to collect payments out of it, right? You can do recurring invoices, all the things. And so, and then you can have apps to, you know, mobile apps to support all of that, whether it's to your customers or your customers' customers, you're able to create value regardless of whether you are an agency, whether you're a course creator, whether you're a roofer, we have the platform for you to run your entire business and market your entire business kind of end to end. Yeah. And I love the features. There are so many built-in features where it's not just selling, say, for instance, a course that you have. Um, you can sell for, say, per text message, per uh, email. You can uh, send one shop invoices. So say you get a lead in, say you're an agency and you want to send off leads to a particular customer, you can charge them per lead. It's true. On you can that. run a paper There's... lead model. You can run a paper show model. You can run all of those different models. And, and yes, you're upcharging. You're going to make margin, not just on the monthly fees, but also on the text messages they use and the emails that they do and the AI that they use and all of the things that cost money. You're going to be able to add a markup to those things and still stay below market rates. So you're going to be competitive. So they ever go out and say, well, you know, I think your text message is too expensive. You can say, well, great, go search text messaging software and, and show me what you're going to pay there. And you're always going to pay, they're always going to pay more. They're going to get one silly feature for that. So you're going to be the best deal in town. You're going to provide more features than anybody else in one spot that they need. You're going to get them away from having to buy seven different pieces of software and try to glue them together with Zapier. Um, it, you're mm. really going to be able to consolidate that tech stack and provide all of the services on top that they're going to need to really make these things work. Um, and you can do it in a very scalable way. Yeah, and you can and I, you can do multiple things with that. Is essentially you were talking about ad revenue, but you have a built-in affiliate program where you can have affiliates promote your stuff, earn a commission, and build your business for you. So you don't have if you're not comfortable with ads, but you know, you're comfortable with other people promoting new stuff, like you do affiliate marketing, yes, then you 100%. can do that too. There's so it's just that's why I love this platform. I've been a customer for three or four years. Five years, I don't know. Since like, since they were a small company, I think you just left your other company to start this, and it was like the perfect the perfect meeting. So yeah, you've seen I a love lot of you guys for sure. Yeah, and it's been amazing, and it, it just, you guys do amazing things. So I would say, what is one thing you're excited about uh, that you're coming out with that you can leave our audience with, and why they should uh, sign up today? 
Oh man. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I already told you on the voice AI, I, I got to tell you, I, I, I won't, I won't say that that's not huge for us. Um, you know, I think that, you know, for us, it's, it's a lot of like some of the big levers now are internationalization. So we're all, uh, having it out in 13 different languages. Um, the e-commerce oh, wow. e e e has already been live, but it will, um, it's going to get um, a lot of upgrades here in, um, in the short term. Um, I, some nerdy stuff like custom objects. I'm, I'm actually super excited about custom objects. Not only is that a big time CRM feature, which is awesome. So it puts us in, in, in league with the biggest CRMs, but also um, it'll allow us to build, build out things that are very industry specific. So, you know, the idea here is if you want to have a car object or you want to have a pet, op, to your vet example, if you want to have a pet object, you can create pets in the system and then you can use pets in real time. So you, you, you know, instead of just adding a new contact or a new company, you can add a new pet. Which is, you know, again, if you're a specific business or you want to want to sculpt yourself to a specific business, that's exactly what you need. So to go in and replace, let's say you're like your vet's, uh, you know, operating system in their business, that's exactly what how we're going to do it. Um, so I think those sorts of things, um, will sort of all brought together in concert, will be tremendous. Um, so I, I think it's all it's all about those those big items and just continue to evolve the system overall to continue to just add those little things that sort of in concert with the big things create just an even better and more reliable, scalable system. Yeah, I've actually recently started kind of seeing that is I, uh, I've been kind of switching a little bit of my CRM and uh, updating it to be more customized to me. And one of the things I, I realized is you, you guys had organizations. It used to be just business name. Yep. And it was kind of like each person had their own name and then business, yep. but they weren't stackable. And so right. now I see that the organization I can put in, you know, um, iPhone or Apple or whatever. And yep. then I would have like this contact, this contact, this contact all under one. And so I can obviously yeah, so contact now If you like that, list. wait till you see custom objects, because then all of a sudden you're going to be able to create multiple different types of custom objects and, and you can associate them. So like maybe you, you want to add pet parents and pets. So now you have multiple pet parents and multiple pets and they're all like connected to each other. And then you can search them and sort them and, and you can use them as, as sort of native objects in the system. And so again, if you're a vet, that's how you think every day. You don't know what an organization is. You don't know what a contact is, but you know what a pet is and you know what a pet parent is. And that's how you run your business. So now you'll actually be able to do that natively in the system. I think that is so amazing. And it allows for people like me that are agencies to really go after different demographic, different industries that we couldn't serve before. And so now we can, you know, contact the veterinarian and be like, hey, I got this amazing thing. Can I show you a demo of it? We have pet parents and pets and this is blah, 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 blah. And you can invoice them. So I'm exactly. very excited. You got it. John, it's been amazing. I really love everything that you guys are doing. You guys are constantly improving, always making changes to what your customer wants versus just kind of throwing shit at a wall. And so <laughs> I'm very excited to see the future, what High Level does. And I've always been a great supporter. So uh, that's it. Thanks for Thank having you. me, man. Of course, Sean. It's been a pleasure. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good one. Peace.